The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. I'm Cisco, and in today's episode, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi, a touchscreen display, and a set of LEDs to build a notification device that tells us when the International Space Station is passing right over our heads. All right, let's do this. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. For this project, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 4, a blank microSD card, the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display, a case to hold it all together, some wires and hardware so that I can make all the connections, and an 8-pixel LED display that I can connect to the Raspberry Pi using the 40-pin header. On the software side, I'm going to use Full Page OS. This is a remix of the Raspbian distribution that is configured to have the Pi run in the so-called kiosk mode right after startup. You can read a little bit more about it on the project page, but for now, let's go ahead and download the latest image. With the image downloaded, as I've shown in another video, we'll go ahead and flash it onto the SD card. I'll connect the card to the USB port of my computer and use the built-in terminal to type in some commands to flash the image. Once the image is flashed to the SD card, we'll want to modify a couple of configuration files. In the boot partition that should be mounted automatically, I'll open a text editor and change the full page OS WPA supplicant text file. This will tell the Pi the Wi-Fi network that it should use once it boots up. I'll also change the country to match my own. The other change I'll make is to have the touchscreen display rotated 180 degrees so that it looks upright in my current setup. With those changes in place, I can eject the card from my computer and get started with assembling the hardware. The hardware assembly process is pretty straightforward. You're welcome to follow along or skip ahead in the video if you already know how to do this. A few tips that I'll share is making sure that the ribbon cables are lined up with the connectors and also pressed firmly against them. Although you shouldn't try to push them in too forcefully, oftentimes the screen will not turn on if the connection is not made properly. Another thing to check is the orientation of these ribbon cables. Also mind when connecting power to the display that you use the pins on the controller board labeled 5 volts and ground. Also remember to place the microSD card in the Raspberry Pi before you hook up the display ribbon cable. The main thing I love about this case is that it only takes 4 screws to fit into the touchscreen display. With everything assembled, it's time to power up the Pi. Once it boots up, as we have full page OS running, we should see a welcome screen on a tab of the Chromium browser. In order to run the International Space Station tracker, let's go ahead and make a few changes. The files that we'll want to run for this project are hosted on my GitHub repository. Once logged in, I'll use the command line utility git to clone the repository onto the Pi. The specific subdirectory that I need is called ISS Tracker. Going back to the GitHub page, we can see that the contents include a couple of Python files and a couple of HTML files that will be running in the Chromium browser. So to do this, I'll start by copying the subdirectory into the appropriate location of the operating system. I'll change my working directory into it, verify that the files are there, and as I'll need to install a few packages, I'll update and upgrade my system. The packages I need to install are a few libraries for Python. 
they will allow me to run the HTML files while controlling the LEDs that we're going to attach to the Pi. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. One more thing I'll need is to get an API key so that I can run the Google Maps on my web application. To do that, I'll navigate to the console of the Google developers website. I'll need to create a new project, enable the Google Maps JavaScript API for it, and then create a credential, specifically an API key. Make sure you keep this safe, as other users will be able to include it in their own projects. I'll now paste this API key into a file that I'll name apikey.txt. With those changes in place, I'm ready to take things for a spin. If I run the Python ISS tracker script and go to the browser on my computer, I can see what's going to be displayed eventually on the touchscreen display. We'll get to that a little bit later. For now, if we use the IP address of the Pi, followed by column 5000 and the path orbit, we can see the International Space Station overlaid onto Google Maps. The trace indicates the orbit that the space station follows. The section in blue corresponds to when the space station enters Earth's shadow. If we visit the other page under the path dashboard, we can see specific information about the space station. It features the number and names of the current crew on board. It also shows the current location with the latitude and longitude. But more importantly, it shows a countdown for when the space station will be visible from our location on Earth. By default, this is set to my own, but if we go to Google Maps, we can get the latitude and longitude of any other location. As an example, I'll use the New York Electronics office in Chicago. If I enter those coordinates into our tracker, I can hit update and get a new time estimate. As a sanity check, I can compare it with other trackers such as those that run online. I do get a difference of about 3 minutes that is pretty consistent no matter where I place the ground station. There are a few other APIs that I can try, but the one I'm using is very straightforward and doesn't need an API key. If you're interested in this, leave me a message on the Element 14 community page for the project. For now, let's move on and have it run on our touchscreen display. To complement the information on the screen, I'll add a few multicolor LEDs to the back of our space station tracker. A tricky part is that we need to connect the LEDs to the 40 pin header as well as power the display. Although I could use a separate power supply, I'll choose to solder a couple of wires to the LED board. I can then connect everything together power it back up and have the system running. To test that the LEDs are working correctly, I can simply run the other Python script inside the ISS tracker directory. With everything looking well, I'm ready for the finishing touches. So that the ISS tracker runs right after boot up, we'll need to do a few things. To make things easier, I've documented the steps in the wiki page of the repository of the project. I'll need to create an entry into systemd so that the Python script runs at boot up. That includes creating a file that I'll name isstracker.service, changing the script location and the name that I want for the service, and then reloading systemd. I'll also need to enable the service and starting it. I can check that everything goes well, both by using the browser and navigating to the paths that we checked before, 
and also by using the status option of the system control command utility for the service. If that looks good, I'll need to tell full page OS what pages I want to display. To do that, I'll need to change three configuration files. In the full page dashboard.txt file, I'll include the two URLs we have been using so far. As those changes might not be reflected on the system, we'll need to manually put them inside the URLs.json file inside the dashboard directory. Please note that these files are also included in the repository under the conf's subdirectory. So with those changes in place, we can finally reboot the system and have our ISS tracker running on the 7-inch touchscreen display. Not only that, but if we dim the light, the LED board can tell us whether the space station is near or far from our location. So there you have it, we've used a Raspberry Pi 4, a 7-inch touchscreen display, and some LEDs to build a device that notifies us when the International Space Station is passing right over our heads. Can you modify the code and display different animations depending on how far or how close it is to you? Let me know in the Element 14 community page for the project. I will see you next time.